Ooh. Hey everybody, it's Tony with Limbrick Motion Pictures, and I've got a special announcement to make. So, I have just gotten the Canon C100 Mark II for Christmas, and I haven't had a chance to actually announce it because one, I don't really have free time uh, to edit these videos, but I do catalog these, so whenever it comes out, you know, enjoy. At least today, it's today is January 10th, 2021, so who knows, you might not see this video till next year, but uh, today was a perfect opportunity for me to test out my camera's dynamic range. My previous camera is the Canon SL2, which has 10 stops of dynamic range, and this camera right here has 12 stops of dynamic range. So I just wanted to, you know, push the limits. Uh, currently, I have the camera with a Sigma 18-300, it's uh, got an aperture of f4 to something else. and. Uh, what you call it? I'm using two stops of ND filter that's built into the camera. And we're just gonna record some snow. So, uh, enjoy. So here's my little setup here. Got my cinema camera mounted on top with enough space for me to chill behind and roll it down completely. All right, hey, it's Anthony from the future. So at least with this portion here of the video, I'm just going through the different default LUTs that I found inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. And honestly, I can, all I can say is that I just enjoy Canon C-Log. This is my first time having a camera with C-Log. So it's just, it's interesting pushing the colors in a file format that actually has information stored versus shooting in a neutral profile and then color grading it. So rather than using default settings, I'm just color grading it on my own. I'm definitely not a color grader by any means, I looked up a YouTube tutorial right before editing this video on how to color grade, but it, all I can say is that it looks beautiful. Okay, real quick breakdown. So Canon C-Log is a file format that just stores a lot of information inside of it, like white balance, contrast, exposure, and any other thing that you might want to edit in post. So much information stored in the shadows, the highlights, especially the blacks so like silhouettes look pretty nice i could have brought the blacks down more to make this a true silhouette but overall the level of control i have is amazing, amazing. all right let's test out a couple things one i want to see how recovered my face can be if i expose it and two i'm testing out the continuous autofocus on the camera so uh let's see how this works I'm heavily underexposed, but now I'm gonna see, go down a stop. How's that? The background is just barely recoverable. How much can I recover on my, uh, how much can I recover on my face? And now we're going down. My face is, you know, acceptable in focus. So, and uh, background's most likely blown out. Yeah, it is. If I were to fine tune it, I'd probably, get two stops of ND and I'd increase the ISO just a bit. How's this? Tight. Oh yeah. Mind focus now. How about now? And now. So I went ahead and took the liberty of shooting a cinematic sequence, and this stuff looks like an actual movie. Man, my camera quality has just went from here to here. You can't see my hands, but you saw it here first, folks. You saw it here first. So for the top handle on the mic, the closer the number is to 10, the more sensitive it is. And the uh, closer it is to zero, the less sensitive it is, you know, vice versa. For anybody else who's out there, because for all the tutorials that I've seen so far, no one's mentioned how to work the audio functions on the handle. Hello, mind turtle. Hello. Oh. Cool. So I'm back. Uh, I already tested underexposures, but oh, I'm going to test overexposures. I know this camera's bad at it, and typically I'm good at landing exposure, but I want to see how far I could push it if I ever were to mess up. So let's test that now. Getting rid of all the stops. This is it. Zero stops, uh, native ISO, background's blown out. All right, woo, that's cold. All right, we're sitting at about 1,000 ISO. Uh, face skin is good, background is gone. Uh, zebras are on the fence right now. 
And for those of you who don't know what zebras are, zebras show where in your image it's about to be overexposed. Uh, so I set mine at 95%. So it lets me know that it's about to be to the point where I can't recover it overexposed. All right, let's go up. This is 1600 ISO, 1600. I don't know, I hate numbers. Got a zebra on, my on the highlights of my face here. The fence still has zebras, but it's like losing some, so you probably can't see the poles right now. Woo! 2000 ISO. <laughs> the background is gone. Um, how's my face looking? I feel like this is still a recoverable range. I've got an entire zebra. There's no more zebras over here, but the zebras are in the middle of my face. This is the farthest I'd push it. This whole background is blown out. Oof. So from the reviews that I've seen on this camera, it's always better to just properly expose for the skin and just let the highlights and shadows fall where they may. We're gonna push that a little bit. So right now I would deem this my perfect exposure for the situation without any lights, just natural light and then the, the blown out snow in the background. So I'm gonna underexpose it and see how much I can recover my skin tones and the highlights. Currently I'm sitting at two indie stops and now I am sitting at four. How's that? Huh? Huh? Hope the autofocus is good, because you know, typically when you underexpose, this thing just, it breeds heavily. <laughs> Hopefully that's enough time for me to put a little filter on there. I'm gonna underexpose it again by adding the sixth. So we are sitting at six ND stops. Um, I'm pretty sure I can't recover my skin tones. It may bring ISO whenever I put it on here. But how's the background look? Is that recoverable? Get some of that. Eh, eh, eh. All right, cool. All right, back down to two stops. My fingers are freezing. I have to alternate putting one in my pocket so I can use the other one to touch the controls on my camera. But the act of swapping them out also hurts. So, <laughs> but yeah, so that's the whole announcement. Got the Canon C100 Mark II. Uh, I look forward to testing this out some more and making some more videos. But if you liked any of the footage or if this helped you or whatever, um, please leave a like. Thank you.